Let's talk about uh, Kenya's grand plan to transform the country into a middle-income African country by 2030. Just in terms of the overall achievement of that objective, we already have had five years of that, well, almost uh, the first, the first five-year period of that plan being implemented. How far would you say that plan has gone? Actually, we're two and a half years into the implementation of Vision 2030. It was launched in June of 2008. And I must say that uh, initial assessments are that we're making steady progress. Obviously, not everything goes as we would like. But um, over the over just this year, for instance, in the political pillar of Vision 2030, we have had the enactment of a new constitution which introduces far-reaching reforms in, uh, ju in the judiciary, in the police services, and in the entire governance structure and legislature of this country. Under the foundations pillar, infrastructure, we have a lot of infrastructure projects ongoing and progressing, in my view, very steadily in the roads, electricity, and fiber, net, uh, fiber, fiber, uh, fiber optics um, uh, sectors. Under the economic pillar, we have several flagship projects also progressing along, as well as a social pillar in education and healthcare. So overall, we are still in the very early stages, the foundational stages, but progress is good and steady. Mm. Obviously, it looks good on paper, Mugo, but as we know, the devil is in the, impl in the implementation and uh, many a plan comes unstuck when you get to actually implement it. Let's talk about the first, the, the first part of this, the, 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 the political uh, pillar, because the political pillar will, to a large degree, underpin and determine whether the project succeeds. How far would you say the foundation has been set in giving Kenya the kind of foundation that it needs in order to be able to underpin strong economic development that will enable the country to achieve these goals? I would say without equivocation that a strong foundation has been set purely in the promulgation of the new constitution. As you may well know, this has been a long struggle by Kenyans over 15 years, struggling to agree on a new constitution and therefore the promulgation and the consensus that was achieved, a 67% yes vote on a 72% voter turnout was an overwhelming endorsement of the new order. And in the past few months, as we now begin to implement uh, the legislation that goes with the constitution, we've already seen the effects, the fundamental effects, especially in the areas of governance and corruption, where we've had senior public figures having to step aside merely on being indicted, whereas just a few months ago that would not have been the case. So even though we're just in the early stages of the implementation of legislation, because we're going to have now to reform the judiciary, as I said earlier on, the police services, um, the electoral processes, set up a new parliamentary system which is bicameral, and prepare for the new governance structure that will pertain two years from today when we have new elections, I think that the most difficult bit was the actual consensus building and Kenyans agreeing that this is a document that we want to implement. Mm. So a lot of work remains to be done, but the most difficult part is behind us, and a new order has already been internalized in my view, and that proof is in the pudding, evidence being how we're now handling cases of graft, as a case in point. One would say, though, and uh, allow me to be a little uh, doubtful here, given uh, the history. I mean, ordinary Kenyans, we know, would definitely have been, uh, uh, have largely been united in the nation. The devil is, uh, uh, or the difficulty has been in getting the politicians to agree to that. And the proof, if I may suggest, should come when uh, the time for elections come and we have to have a transfer of power from one party to the next. How ready would you say the politicians are with this constitution in place? I think that the people of Kenya have spoken, and they have spoken loudly and very clearly, and that the politicians have no choice but to follow the will of the people. The principles set up in Chapter 6 of the Constitution, Leadership and Integrity, the institutions being set up and being reformed, and indeed we are, we've agreed as a nation to fast track the most important bits, the judicial reform and electoral reform, are such that it would be very difficult for any politician, regardless of, you know, how, however negative their motivation may be, to go against the will, the collective will of the Kenyan people.
It's certainly something that we're going to be watching from the tip of Southern Africa and I think across the whole of the continent. Let's move on to the economic pillar. Now, we know that Kenya's economy had struggled uh, in the years around 2002, and we know why. And then we have seen that growth gradually <coughs> come to 6.1%. Now, the plan envisages that the economy should be growing at least around the 10% mark. How achievable is that, given the history I've just outlined here? Well, let's first of all set the context right. The vision uh, when it was uh, constructed envisaged that we would be at 10% GDP growth rate per annum by the year 2012. Now we're in 2010, so we are not yet at the point where we were expecting to be at 10% growth. It was a gradual process. And you're correct to say that up to 2007, we were clearly on track. We had attained a 7.1% growth rate in 2007 which of course uh, dropped precipitously after the post-election crisis that we had in 2008 to 1.6% in 2008, 2.6% in 2009. But this year there's been a dramatic shift. And we're looking at a 5 to 5.2% growth rate in the year 2010. So we have decided as a nation that we shall not adjust the goalposts. We shall strive to still attain the 10% growth rate by 2012. And so the challenge is upon us to see how, what can we do to accelerate, what sectors can we look at to fast track the growth rate in the next two years and see how close we can get to 10%. Practically though, how realistic is it to keep uh, the 10% uh, target uh, in line here, given uh, the, the issues that we've just discussed now? I think the issue we just discussed, which is about the issues of governance, because what you're talking about is mm. that governance has been a drawback in this country, as in many African countries for the last 50 years. Mm. And I can assure you that one of the reasons that has been a dramatic increase in growth this year is because of the confidence the people of Kenya, the investor community, has found in the processes that we have we are undertaking, the political reform processes that we've spoken about. So from where I sit, it's actually because of the reforms, because of the seriousness that we're demonstrating in the reform processes, that there's much better confidence. And we're looking, at, we're seeing investors who have previously not looked at this market beginning to come and say, hey, let's invest in this country. So from where I sit, I'm very optimistic. We are not uh, wearing rose-colored glasses. There are still many challenges ahead of us, including political ones. But I'm saying that we are going to be optimistic and forge ahead and not move the goalposts of 10%. Because I firmly believe if you start moving goalposts, then you begin to miss the mark. Mm -hmm. we, will we will retain the 10% goalposts for 2012. And when we get to 2012, we shall measure our performance and look back and see what we can adjust for the next five year time frame. The first mark and one of the first milestones that the country is going to be marked against is, uh, of course, uh, the 2015 MD, M MDGs. How close or do you see the Kenyan government and the Kenyan nation being able to achieve those goals by 2015? Look, I think that the MDG goals are a challenge for all African and developing countries. Mm. And clearly, they, 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 they will be. There will be certain targets that we will not meet by 2015. However, there are others. In the area of education, for instance, I am reasonably confident that by 2015, we'll have nearly achieved the MDG goals in education, especially access. Um, as you well know, we have had access to free primary education for our children since 2003. We've extended that to high school education day uh, secondary school education. We're now looking at quality and relevance. So some MDG goals, uh, such as education, I am confident reasonably that they will be achieved. But I also know that there are some that are a lot more difficult. But they, 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 as I said, the spirit is to keep forging on. Indeed. And that will be supported by the rest of the continent. Let's get back to the economy and talk about the drivers of uh, the 10% that we're talking about. Which sectors of the economy do you see driving that growth? I mean, we do know, of course, when you talk Kenya, we're talking, of course, tourism, and we're also talking a little bit of mining. <coughs> well, six sectors have been chosen, and very deliberately. Agriculture was selected because it constitutes 25% of our GDP and is therefore the largest sector of our GDP and also a significant part of our employment. And therefore, when it comes to agriculture, we have first and foremost to assure food security, ensure food security, but we also have to move agriculture up the value chain 
um, into agri-processing. Then tourism, as you've just mentioned, which is anywhere between 9 to 11% of, of our GDP, depending on the particular year. And we're looking very deliberately at improving our tourism, build, putting up resort cities in key uh, touristic areas, also segmenting our tourist markets between premium and also underutilized premium, uh, premium markets, and also coming up with other types of tourism, cultural tourism, ecotourism, um, sports tourism. Then the third sector is manufacturing, 10% of our GDP. We intend to industrialize and start original manufacturing in this country over the next couple of years. Fourth is ICT. IT-enabled services have been a major, major boon for this country. You all know telecommunications, M-Pesa, uh, the banking system, m -Kesho. In fact, in terms of mobile financial services, Kenya is already a leading global innovator. The fifth sector is wholesale trade. We need to actually uh, ensure that the trading infrastructure from markets to roads is there to ensure that products get, produce gets to market. And finally, the financial services sector, ensuring that we farm up Kenya's role as the financial hub for East and Central Africa. 